equal to the gravitational force on a 100 kilogram object. So first things first, we know that F of G is equal to mg. And this is going back to when we used acceleration and all of that stuff in regards to force. And so we know that the force is there. And so since those forces have to be equal, we know that mg is equal to the electrostatic force. Now, to replace the electrostatic force, we have the equation which is the electrostatic force is equal to K, Q1, Q2, and those are Qs, not 9s, over R squared. Well, in this case, since the Qs are the same, we can write that as K, Q squared over R squared because the Q, Q times Q, and it's the same Q, is equal to mg. Now, since we're trying to find the r, or the distance between the two objects, in this case, it's an r, but it's not the radius, oddly enough. It's just the distance between the two. We need to move the r over to this side and isolate it. So we're going to cross multiply. So we've got k q squared over mg is equal to r squared. And then for our final, for our working equation, we're just going to square root everything. So we end up with q, I'm sorry, k, q squared over mg is equal to r. And so from here, we can substitute in all of our values. And so we get that the square root of k, so 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meters squared over coulombs squared times 1 coulomb, and that's squared. And I am very sorry that this is all crooked. I'm writing at an angle here, actually, while I'm trying to record this tutorial. And then that is all over 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, these go together and end up making a newton in their units. So you multiply more stuff together, and you end up for the units with newtons meters squared over coulombs squared times coulombs, I'm sorry, times coulombs squared over newtons. So this is probably looking really confusing to you, but basically what ends up happening is the coulombs cancel, the newtons cancel, and the whole problem is square root so that meters goes that meter squared just goes down to meters so our final unit is in meters because we're trying to find the distance between the objects and so after you've multiplied all that out our final solution can be rounded to 3030 meters as the distance between these two charges okay so now we're going to move on to question number six. In this problem, we're told that there are five equal charges that are arranged around a semicircle. So these charges can all be represented by Q. They're all the same. And then there's one charge at the center that we're going to use a little Q for. <clears throat> and so we're also given the radius of this, which is, I'll just label that as R. So R is the same also up here and over here. And so now what we're going to do is for our givens, we're just going to list them out. So big Q is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 
little q is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And the radius of this semicircle is 0.1 meters. Now, as we're going through this problem, we are going to need to deal with each of these charges separately. So I'm just going to have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5. And the reason I'm doing that is because in order to analyze the charge that is on this point right here, what we're going to need to do is find the charge it receives for or the force it receives from each of these individual charges. And since some are angled differently, some are straight on, some are perpendicular, they all have different x and y components of their forces. So whereas this point right here has its full force going at Q in the x direction, the one up here only has a force in the y direction. This force has it split both ways. And so our unknown in this problem is the force of the electrostatic force on the little q and the equation we're going to be using. So now in order to do this problem what we're going to have to do is find for all of these so let's just say for Q1, we need to find its charge in the X direction and Q1 in the Y direction. Now if we wanted, we could just think about it and figure out that since they're completely or they're completely um, in line with each other, they are going to cancel each other out because they're equal, they're same distances and everything. But just for this, we're going to f um, just analyze it. And so, um, for all intents and purposes, let's just say the positive direction is this way and this way. Is what we'll do. And so, in order to find the x component of it, we would basically draw a triangle. But since there is no x component, it's only the y component, we know that that is 0 and that this is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 or 19, sorry, coulombs. Okay? And we can do the same thing for the fifth charge, which is the one down here. And so that is going to be 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Then what we're going to do is find Q3 just because it, um, it is simple because it's only on the x-axis. So Q3, its y is 0 coulombs because it has no y component and its x component is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now in order to find Q2 and Q4, we're going to have to use sine and cosine because if you were to have the x component of this or how far the force or the charge goes in the x direction you've got a little line there and then if we've got it in the y direction we've got it like that so it's a little triangle here because the way the force acts is straight like that or the hypotenuse and so since according to the picture this charge is halfway between this and this. Um, we can basically figure out that the angles for both of these are 45 and 45. Since this is basically, this point Q2 is located 
at a point where its x and y are equal, not in positive negative, but they are equal in value or in magnitude, um, this is going to be 45 degrees and that's going to be 45 degrees. And so we know that the f charge, this, is on the hypotenuse. So in order to find the x, we're going to be using this angle and we're going to say that the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to its x component over its hypotenuse, which is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so what we're going to end up doing is multiply that, and I'm not going to write the actual number out just because I'm running out of room here on the side. And so what you're going to end up finding is 4.525 times 10, I'm really sorry for running out of room here, um, to the negative 19, and that's in coulombs, because all we did is we just multiplied by the hypotenuse to isolate the x component, because that's what we were trying to find. And now, since this is a 45-45-90 triangle, the sine of 45 degrees, which is opposite, or the, the opposite leg, or the y component in this case, because it's over here in relation to the angle, is going to be the same because the sine value and cosine value of 45 degrees is the exact same. So once again that's going to be 4.525 times 10 to the negative 19. And we can repeat this for, um, for charge 4. These two values are going to be the same over here. They're just going to have different positive negative signs. So. We just do that, and that, and voila, we have all of our values. So now the thing that we have to do is basically figure out in what direction all of the values are facing. So if we just have a little point here, and we're going to say this is the center point that all of the forces are acting on, we're going to draw a free body diagram on this. And so we're going to say the force on Q by Q1 is pushing it in this direction because the force is coming from here and pushing that way. The force on Q by big Q5 is in the opposite direction and I'm sorry I should have made those the exact same length I'm just gonna put those that little tick mark to mean that they're the same then let's just look at Q3 Q3 pushes this way so the force on Q of Q3 and I'm actually going to have to move this so that we have more room so we've got that. Now we're going to move into um, the values for Q2 and Q4. So both Q2 and Q4, since they're both in this direction, they're both pushing in the positive direction with the same amount. So I'll just put two tick marks there, two tick marks there. And so that's force on Q by Q2 and force on little q by big two four. But that is only the x component. Now what we need to do is also plug in the y components for these. And so the force of q2, or the force, yeah, the force on little q by q2 is a negative force since it's up here, it's pushing in the negative direction. So the force on q by q2 and likewise, in this direction, the force on Q by Q4 
is 